Welcome, Blade fans, back to another, let's call it an overview. And I guess you could call it a review because the circumstances around me receiving this beautiful automatic knife made by Heretic called the Wraith are, I would say, unusual. Um, I have been gifted very few knives over the years. Um, certainly not because I don't deserve it, right? <laughs> but uh, someone reached out who is a uh, avid follower of the channel and uh, also of the Knife Junkie and uh, other good channels uh, by the uh, code name of North Code. That's his uh, Instagram moniker, and I believe maybe YouTube too. I'm not sure. Uh, and it's Ryan at North Code. Uh, I okayed it with him first to make sure it was okay to mention this. He gifted me this gorgeous, gorgeous knife. I mean, I had done previously a review on a Wraith knife, but I have raved over the years at this particular model that he has shown. And uh, this is very special in that it is an integral, and I didn't realize that when I first picked it up, it's an integral carbon fiber knife. Uh, to the extent where we do need to have a, uh, this beautiful Jade G10 bolster, uh, it's a cover because that allows you to get at the mechanism and allows them to assemble the knife and so on and so forth. Uh, there are other knives that are integral that don't have that, but I think an auto is an exception. Well, let's open it up. It is, um, not terrifically energetic but that's okay. I don't need the knife to fly out of my hand. So uh, the springs in the Wraith uh, are not the uh, most powerful. So uh, that's not a negative. And if I mention any little uh, quirks or points about this knife, it's just because uh, that's what I do with knives. I take a look at them and I point things out. Whether or not they're good or bad, that is up to the owner uh, on that topic, I want to just uh, get on my soapbox here for a bit. Uh, there are other channels uh, fairly recently um, getting a lot of hits, and, and it's good and, and legitimate because they torture test knives. They put them through all kinds of, uh, I would say, abuse uh, in the name that uh, the knife should be able to survive that. And uh, no matter what the knife is, they should be able to withstand this, that, and the other thing. Um, to me, a knife is primarily a cutting tool. The fact that it locks and can stay locked is a plus because uh, we all come from, well, maybe not everybody, but I do come from an era where uh, the folding knives were all slip joints. So they had uh, two positions you could uh, put them in and one was kind of a safety so that you didn't fold the knife on the hand. And uh, they have what they call a walk and talk. I'm not a big fan of those. I think I've only got one in the whole collection. It's from Tucson, believe it or not. But, uh, you know, how strong is the lock, right? And should it be able to take a spine wrap with, uh, you know, wrapping it on a piece of wood or uh, hitting it with a, a pretty good uh, baton or stick and uh, having it fold? Well, I haven't tried that with this one. Uh, I've tried it with a few others, uh, some of the Microtech MSIs, because there was questions about those. And, you know, I was able to get it to fold uh, with a, a very sharp wrap on the back. Whether or not I would ever be needing that to hold up in a use case, um, I, I just think that's questionable. So I guess my bottom line is we can't put all knives in one category. This knife is a plunge lock. It has a spring. Push the button and releases the plunge lock and the spring takes over. Now you can see that if we go like that, it's not that strong of a spring. It really engages more right about there, okay? So um, I'm off of that soapbox, but I just wanted to say, and I'm gonna be mentioning this with every review going forward for a while, that um, I think knives are subject to use cases. A chef's knife, is not an automatic side opening knife. Side opening knife is not a out the front knife. 
completely different mechanisms. And you're not going to get an out the front knife to have the lock defeated by wrapping it on the back, for instance. Maybe by stabbing it into, you know, a chunk of wood or something you would. But for real hard use where I'm worried about the pivot of a knife, it's really going to be fixed blades that I'm using anyway. All right. That may or may not make sense to you, but it's just something that's on my mind lately. And uh, I'll, I'll offer up more about it going forward. I don't want to uh, taint this review with uh, that information. So we've got a Wraith knife and it has a frag pattern here. And what's interesting is that fades into the handle here. So that's, that's a really cool uh, visual, I think, is that you've got this texture here that fades into this smooth carbon fiber. And uh, I would call it a weave carbon fiber. You might agree. Also, we have a surround on the pivot here. And by the way, that's a T25 pivot. I've tried that out. Uh, it took a little bit of tightening to center the blade. The blade was slightly off. That's fine. We've got a, a, a pretty good amount of handle for blade here. One thing I picked up on is that we've got that point pretty close to where the handle ends here. And I do pick up some of my finger flesh there. So carrying it in the pocket, that's going to be to the back. It's not likely that I'm ever going to encounter that, but it's something. And I'm going to show you another wraith that I already had, which came in on a trade uh, that where this blade is slightly lower. So I'm thinking the way they tuned it from the factory, you see, you got that little bit of play on all auto knives because you don't want them to start out at the contact point. You want them to not be contacting anything down here or up in here. Anywho, uh, got a uh, rectangular fragged button on this one. The knife is really uh, robust. I think this tip would hold up very well to almost any kind of work. Of course, the weakest part of any folding knife, any folding knife, is the pivot, okay? The pivot is not going to be like a fixed blade knife. Got a lanyard hole here. It is very light. We're going to take some measurements, having mentioned that. Overall length of the knife is large. We're going to call it eight and three quarters. The blade length, uh, we're going to call that like, uh, they're calling it 375. It's not really 375. It's more like a 365 with a cutting edge uh, pretty much the same, like 365. As far as the other dimensions go, in millimeters, since we're there, pretty thick, 4.2 millimeters. Whew. That's a thick blade stock. And 0.16 is the measurement in inches. 0.60 on the handle. So it's not a skinny knife. And we're going to close it up for the weight. And we've got a weight of... I'm going to call that four ounces, 3.97. Um, the knife I'm going to show you in a bit for comparison is uh, actually heavier because it has an aluminum handle and not all carbon fiber. So there are advantages to this integral carbon fiber knife. And by the way, if you're thinking that the material doesn't hold up, <laughs> there's, there's not a chance of flex there. Look at how thick those walls are. And uh, nothing inside... See if I can show you that. Just carbon fiber on both sides, except here where you see the uh, matching, uh, the mating of the bolster area with the rest of the knife. And so the purpose behind that, again, is to be able to put the mechanism together and then screw it down. And these look like... Uh, they're bigger than a T8. They may be like a T10. Big hardware all the way around, which is great. T25, as I said, right there. 
and um, T25 there. As I recall, I think the show side was the one that had the movable pivot. Uh, I'm not going to try that again, but I just, I did tighten it up a smidge. So, I mean, I don't look gift horses in the mouth, particularly <laughs> gifts that are this large, so to speak. And, and this is a pricey knife. I was blown away when Ryan offered this up to me. And, you know, you're saying stuff like, are you sure? Are you sure? Are, are, you, are you thinking straight? <laughs> Just a very generous man trying to pare his collection down. And he knew I really liked it. So shout out again to Ryan at North Code. Super, super, super. Let's uh, do some compares. As I said, and by the way, we'll look at the clip on this real quick. It is a ball bearing in there. Uh, and it, it doesn't work that badly. You know, a lot of people don't like the uh, ball bearings for the, uh, the pocket clip. And it, it's kind of a distressed, it's on purpose, kind of a, a worn look to it. That's not, there's very little wear on this knife. He said he carried it maybe 20 times or so. If you look real careful past the uh, nice brush finish on that flat, uh, you might see some very, very fine little, you know, pocket wear scratches. Here is the other wraith that I had, and uh, it's aluminum, and I didn't realize at the time that it's also integral, but many of the aluminum handles are, and it's got the carbon fiber, black carbon fiber uh, bolster with the same setup, except we got a little different uh, look to the button. They've made a lot of variants of this wraith. Uh, if you just look up uh, Heretic Wraith Auto, you will see a lot of them are not in stock anymore and out of production. I don't think they're making this particular one anymore, but I could be wrong. But they've come up with lots of different flavors of this knife, all blacked out blade, um, Timascus, I think. You know, I, I can't even think of all the variants on that. Here's another recently acquired auto. This is the Ritter Hogue. And this is the RSK, which is Ritter Survival Knife. It's a little shorter, not quite as large a knife. And uh, it opens with, I guess they said they put a special spring in there. It's super snappy. So you can see there's the snap on that one. There's the snap on that one. It makes kind of a dull thud because you don't get the resonance in the carbon fiber. It sort of deadens the sound. And now listen, a, sh a higher pitch snap on the aluminum handled one. Same blade, same thickness, except, oh, I didn't mention this is an LMAX. Yes. And that is right there on the blade. Yeah. Uh, this one is 154 cm, which stands out in the white there. You can see that pretty closely. And uh, there is the Heretic logo, Wraith. This is a Wraith, uh, oh, it's a number 85. Let's see if they put a number on this one. Uh, this one is hidden. No, nope, it's... Um, 1086. Was there a one in this one? Nope, just an 83. So this is a much earlier model. And again, the round button versus the rectangular one. And it is an ounce heavier, by the way. So four ounces on this knife for the size and five ounces on this guy. See if I can validate that for you. Not that you wouldn't trust me, right? Yep, see, right up under five ounces for that one. And just under four for that one. So you lose a full ounce. What's the Ritter? It's pretty light too, just a little over four ounces. So for the size of this Wraith knife, you get a big package, almost nine inches with what did I say, like a 3.65. And uh, so it's very close to that ounce per inch, which you seldom see for kind of a somewhat chunky auto, but it's comfortable in the hand, got plenty left over there, 
Got some really nice jimping that's not too fine, but nice and grabby. If you choose to go up here, you actually have that swale on the blade there, that dip that uh, gives you a placement for your thumb, although it's not jimped. Um, definitely a powerful knife. And I think that plunge lock is pretty strong, although you probably find somebody who can uh, beat the crap out of it and get it to fail. Who knows? I did see a torture test uh, by um, trying to think uh, of the guy's name that does a lot of the bench, not bench made, the uh, Microtech uh, stuff. Um, ah, the names are right on the tip of my tongue. But anyway, you probably know who I'm talking about. Uh, he does torture tests now and then for some of the Microtech stuff, and it's older tests, but he beat the crap out of a um, out the side uh, SOCOM auto and uh, held up pretty darn well. So uh, I have a lot of trust in the plunge locks. Gorgeous knife. Uh, real quick compare to, I've been carrying the Reptilian, so I don't have it on the table, but here's the Rat 1. Uh, pretty close. I'd say dead on with the Rat 1 for size. And uh, same with the blade. So, you know, right in that 365, 3.7 inch blade length. Just feels so light with that carbon fiber. Well, I'm thrilled. I just wanted to uh, do this video as kind of a thanks and a review on this uh, great knife uh, that is now in my collection from Ryan, North Code. And uh, no, don't go asking the guy for knives now. He's not giving away everything. <laughs> I don't think he'd appreciate that. But again, uh, shout out to Ryan and uh, many thanks for watching you all. Don't forget to give this video a like and uh, subscribe. Be back with you soon.